part. Um, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it again either. So, so just quickly, because then I want to tie it into the Sacred Heart and also to St. Therese. Okay, so like most of the uh, post-exile books we're dealing with, um, you know, a broken people. Um, here it's a very, almost like an examination of conscience. And if you notice in Baruch, um, he doesn't just link the current sins that he was linking really since the time of the ancestors and Moses in the desert. We, we, have, we have disregarded your voice. We have disregarded your precepts, you know, and that's what led to the condition, you know, that, that we are in now. It wasn't something that just happened, but this was a long trend for hundreds of years, you know, going back to the time of Moses. But that very last thing, each of us went off after the devices of his own wicked heart, okay? And we served other gods and did evil in the sight of the Lord. So, again, whenever Scripture talks about the heart, they're talking about the, the center core of the person, you know, from which all their actions and thoughts and desires come from. You know, that's the heart, you know, not necessarily the organ, you know, that we have in our bodies, but what is the sole source of all of our actions and thoughts and words and deeds? Where is that disposition? You know, and he says, well, you know, for us, the heart wasn't with the Lord. It was off serving other gods. It was off to other hearts and other, other loves, that is. So now with that in mind, the sacred heart of Jesus, St. Therese. You know, St. Therese... Um, if you ever read her autobiography, The Story of the Soul, I recommend it highly. Um, you know, I'm not a, uh, you know, an expert on, on books, and nor am I an expert on St. Therese, but, you know, she was one of the books that I read during my discernment, you know, in my, my vocation. You know, one of the things with St. Therese, she, she struggled, you know, as a nun who, who only lived in the cloister and, and lived really only to the year 24. She, she died of tuberculosis. At 24 years old, uh, she struggled as to where her place was. Should I be a missionary? Should I be a martyr? What, what, what do I do, Lord? And then finally she came to the conclusion, you know, reflecting on the body of Christ and how, you know, there's different parts of the body of Christ and different functions and different places. Where's hers? And she immediately recognized, you know, my place is in the heart. I will be the heart of the body of Christ. That brought her consolation and, and a sense of purpose. And so what did she do now in her monastery? Really devoted and offer up her sufferings, especially towards the end of her life, suffering with tuberculosis, you know, offering it up for the church and that her vocation as the heart was to love. That was her purpose. And so as I was, you know, just praying up upstairs in the church, I, I, I thought of, you know, a lot of our elderly. You know, there's none in here. There's no elderly here. <laughs> but some of you go and you give communion to those who are homebound. Now, maybe some are in great spirits, but maybe some sometimes are just depressed. You know, and they're trying to figure out what their purpose is now. And and that how they remember all the things they used to do when they were younger and how active they were. And now, you know, their bodies, you know, getting old and getting weak and, and um, combine that with a sense of maybe loneliness, you know, them trying to find their place. Well, I, I think St. Therese, you know, has her heart became the heart and united her heart with the sacred heart of Jesus, you know, that maybe that could be their vocation now. That could be their function, to pray, to pray for the church, to pray for their parish, to pray for their priest, to pray for you. But to turn into the heart of Jesus, has, has their homes now become, become kind of like a little monastic place for them, you know, because they can't get out. They're homebound. They can't make it to Mass. If they're looking for a sense of purpose and meaning, and maybe they ask you the question, and I know I've been asked the question, Father, why am I still here, you know? Why am I still here? Why hasn't God taken me? 
You know, I know Jeannie Jones, she used to say that to me. I don't know if she ever told you that, but she told it to me. You know, like, what, Father, why am I still here? Well, Jeannie, pray. You know, and she did. And she did it very well. And so maybe that could be their vocation, but maybe it's you, too, if you're looking for your place in life. Follow the model of St. Therese. Unite your heart to the sacred heart of Jesus. And if you're finding your place, you can always pray. Pray for the church. May God bless you.